Jason Bullard and his wife Angela scammed over 200 investors with an $18 million Ponzi scheme. They stole from friends and family for over 14 years. Interestingly, they did it with racehorses. The Bullards were one of the most renowned horse owners in Minnesota. Who are the Bullards and how did they get so many people to trust them with their livelihoods? The answer is a combination of their success and deceptive nature. Both of them had fond memories of going to the races with their friends and family. Jason was an athlete growing up, and this gave him a competitive edge that he took to business and eventually crime. Before he and his wife participated in their first race, they were business owners. Angela owned a fitness center, while Jason was a licensed securities broker between 2000 and 2004. He had legitimate experience with finance and made use of this knowledge later on during his schemes. Together, they owned a limo and party bus service catering to the Twin Cities area. Jason bought his first horse in 2015 and used his business sense to figure out the game of horse racing. The future con artist rose to prominence, and as his horses kept winning, he was well known at the famous Canterbury Park racetrack. In 2019, his stable tied for the top owner spot by scoring 56 first place finishes and earning almost $1 million in prize money. How good was his stable? How many prize horses did he own? Before the Bullards could become the top names in Shakopee racing community, they had to build a stable. The stable's name was taken from Jason's own words when he said, I want want to build an empire. So, Empire Racing Stables was born, and the Bullards were ready to set off on their new adventure. As of 2019, their success enabled them to own 24 horses with 19 racing at Canterbury Park. Their team of horses became some of the most frequent winners throughout the Empire Racing Stables career. Maybe it was Jason's clear determination to become the best at Canterbury Park that drove him to run his Ponzi scheme. Looking back to his athletic teenage years, it was evident that Jason had a competitive nature. When he did something, he didn't just want to participate. Jason wanted to be the best. This drive carried over into every aspect of his life, and horse racing was no exception. When considering his new career in stable running, his first thought was how could he win and be the best at it? Jason figured the more horses he owned, the better his odds of winning were. You know, cast a wide net. Empire Racing Stables also offered a unique program where they allowed people to invest in a racehorse. The part owner program made investors feel like they owned their own horse without dealing with the complex maintenance part. However, it was just more fuel for the Bullard scam. It was Jason's dream to become the biggest name in horse racing at Canterbury Park. What exactly is Canterbury Park, and why does he want to dominate there so badly? This well-known horse racing track has been around since the early 80s. They went by many different names as they switched owners over the years. One thing the owners all had in common was the idea to bring horse racing back to Minnesota. In 1994, they delivered on that promise. In 1996, they changed the name for the final time, and the legendary Canterbury Park was born. The track focused on horse races, but always wanted to venture out into other gambling avenues. And in 1999, they got their chance. Legislation passed, allowing them to open a card room, making them a convenient destination for Minnesota gamblers. The track hosts the Fall Poker Classic, a two-week poker tournament that's been held at the Canterbury ever since 2001. They even hosted the Twin Cities Summer Jam Music Festival in 2019. Between its prestigious horse races and the poker tournament, it's easy to see why Bullard wanted to be some to know at Canterbury Park. While horse racing was a huge part of their life, it had to take a backseat to their other project, a massive Ponzi scheme. They gathered around $18 million over the years from friends and family. They used the promise of significant returns to convince investors to fork over their money. Jason Bullard used his previously gained knowledge in finance to trick investors into believing he had their best interests at heart. He promised to invest their money in Forex trades, offering returns of 10 to 12 percent. While Jason was licensed, he never completed his registry with the National Futures Association. The NFA is an organization all traders have to register with. Its purpose is to protect investors and make sure its members meet their responsibility. Jason was showing false reports to his investors to ease their nerves, making it seem like their investments were performing well. Jason received investor money and deposited it into the Bullard Enterprises TD Ameritrade account. According to the SEC, Jason lost almost $300,000 in 2018 and $700,000 in 2019. He bounced back in 2020 with a measly $1,000 gain. By January 31st, Bullard Enterprises had $275 in their brokerage account. However, Bullard provided investors with fake documents that showed significant gains. In reality, those accounts acted as the Bullard's personal ATMs until they ran dry, took the money, and used it to fund Empire Racing Stables and prop up their businesses. They collected money from over 200 investors, most of whom were family and friends. Many were older people who tapped into their retirement accounts 
accounts to invest with the Bullard. The SEC alleged in their report on the Bullards that their Ponzi scheme had been in full swing since 2007. However, they didn't start their racing career until much later. They didn't buy a horse until 2015 and didn't become big at Canterbury Park until 2019. Before this, they were funding all of their business ventures and their entire lifestyle off of the Ponzi scheme. Years and years of this had put them in a hole and they needed a way out. Jason, swinging blindly, hoping to get lucky on some multi-million dollar investment, or did he have a plan? Jason saw horse racing as their way out. And if that is indeed the case, 2019 was the year he planned on doing it. Before 2019, Empire Racing Stables only brought in around $100,000 a year. But in 2019, they almost cleared a million. They competed more and more often as they were trying to get all of the money they could before the Ponzi scheme came crashing down. They might have been trying to earn enough to dig themselves out of the hole they were in, or maybe they were going to fly away with as much cash as possible. In the end, only the Bullards know the answer to that question. If the plan to get out of their Ponzi scheme was to buy horses, then it was a risky plan to say the least. The cost of purchasing horses and running a stable can be astronomical in itself. The base price of a thoroughbred racehorse is $100,000, but his price can skyrocket to well above $300,000 due to the competitive nature of the purchase. But owning a horse is only the tip of your expenses. You must also pay for upkeep for the animal, which can run around $45,000 annually. One horse could leave you a half million dollars in the hole. Now imagine having 23 of them on top of a horse racing company to care for. If you add up all the basic costs of these animals, the Bullard spent four and a half million dollars, and that's on the low end. That's not including paying recovery fees of injured animals or taking care of a jockey salary. There's so many fees involved in starting and maintaining this business that the Bullard's hole got much deeper before it ever had a chance to shrink. It seemed as though the plan would work, and they'd finally be able to get out of their scheme. They built a prominent life for themselves as racehorse owners and Ponzi schemers, knowing it could all be gone in a flash if that weight hanging over them ever fell. And fall, it did. Everything went downhill for the couple. People began asking for their money back quicker than the crooks expected. They tried to find new backers and pay off their old investors. They had defrauded over 200 people, and all of them were about to become aware of the scam. When the SEC opened up the case against the Bullards, they asked for all of their assets to be frozen and transferred to a court-appointed receiver. The SEC also had Jason's brokerage license suspended. The horses were allowed to compete in races, but the winnings went to the receiver while they were being investigated. At this point, it was evident that the two swindlers had been caught in a trap of their own making, with no way out. All that was left was to go to trial and find out the truth behind their lies. Furthermore, Jason admitted he had not participated in Forex trading since 2015, the year his horse racing dreams came to light. To make matters worse, he reportedly lost over $700,000 in bad trades in 2019, the year he pulled in almost $1 million in horse race winnings. Bullard may have been a licensed broker, but that didn't seem to make him a good one. During the investigation, many other things about the Bullard's Ponzi scheme came out. One of the more noticeable was them abusing the relief given to businesses to help during COVID. The PPP, or Paycheck Protection Program, offered by the U.S. Small Business Association, was to help small companies keep employees. When word of this made it to the Bullards, they saw it like everything else in their life, a resource to exploit. They got $434,000 in assistance cash and used it all to keep their Ponzi scheme from sinking. The SEC claims the Bullards used the bulk of the proceeds they received from the Paycheck Protection Program to either fund investor payments until new investor money was recovered or to fund their horse racing efforts. The Bullards were scrambling at that point, desperate to save their sinking ship, but there was no way out. Jason and Angela's long winding road is finally coming to an end. They were officially charged at the beginning of September 2021. Their Ponzi scheme fell apart, pulling them from their millionaire thrones and back down to earth. All of the Bullards' friends and family now know what they did to them, so there is no escaping it. The Bullards are unlikely to race another horse ever again, as was the evidence presented at their trial that could probably bury them. Click here to watch one of these next videos.